The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 17th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that is being tossed at. Sorry, I was uh, was uh, was uh, was uh, was uh, looking at something got sidetracked there. I thought maybe we were having the same issue we had with the microphone, but we don't. So that's a good thing. In any event, folks, look, I would love to hear from you. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, but you've got a question, then send me an email. Now send that off early because sometimes these internet service providers, it takes a while to get to me. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, just to make it easier for me to differentiate your email from all the junk that I get, just put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, like Mr. John uh, did, uh, you can uh, send me any kind of message, private or public. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. we got a sea of green out there. You've got all the U.S. indices that we track trading to the upside. Dow's up 129, uh, S&P 15, NASDAQ 47. All those up about four tenths percent, eight tenths for the Russell. That's uh, 15 points. One and three tenths for the semis. That's 40 points out there. One percent, you know, nine tenths percent for the uh, trannies. 124 points. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you got service now. 19 bucks, four percent. Lamb Research, 14 bucks. Two and a half percent. Broadcom, 11 bucks. One and seven tenths percent. Keysight Technology, 11 bucks. Seven percent out there. United Rentals, 11 bucks. The upside, three percent move. To the downside, it's Madrigal Pharmaceuticals off nearly 12 bucks. That's four percent move. Agil Agilisis. Down nine bucks or eleven percent. World Wrestling Entertainment down seven percent, nearly eight bucks. Everest Real Estate Group down six fifty. Renaissance Holding down about six bucks, a three percent move. So we've got movers and we've got shakers out there. So let's um, let's do this here. Let's first start and take a look at where are we at with regard to market breadth. So let's take a look at our four primary time frames: the daily, weekly, the uh, 240 and the 60. This is the S&P 500. So even though you've got a nice little rally going inside the S&P 500, expect it to be very choppy because all four of these speed dials are in the negative. And in fact, if you take a look at a 60-minute time frame chart, you have 47 instruments trading above profile and 335 trading below. Wow. Now, you want to see this. We're going to see the exact opposite. I don't know if we're going to see it. The exact opposite. But let's take a look at the NDX 100. And what do we have? Wow. So that's really wild. I did not expect this. So you are negative market breadth for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P for all four time frames out here. Hmm. We're going to have to go take those intraday charts, see if we can find any kind of topping patterns out there. So you got market breadth negative with the um, a price move up. It says, be careful for a trap door. At least that's what it says to Stevie. So let's go put up a, a chart of the, well, I'm interested in the NASDAQ because that certainly is leading the charge out here. So let's take, whoops, that wasn't the set of charts I wanted. Give me a moment. We'll get there and then we'll change over. It's right here. Okay. So let's go change over to the eight panel set of charts that I've got out here, white background charts, and see if we can figure anything out with regard to the NQ. Let's start just simply with the shortest time frame. Let's go lower right all the way to upper left. So I'm gonna just expand this out. What do we see? So all we see here is basically a consolidation. We see a consolidation. We're up towards the top of the consolidation. No, uh, other than that, no signal. So no pattern that I've got. Let's try the 15-minute uh, chart. I doubt we're going to see anything more here. Well, we do have actually a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And with price above profile and its oscillator and change line, 
This is suggesting it wants to get back and test that TD9 count high. However, it's inside that swing point. As long as it remains above 13,532.50, we're just above that right now, then odds would favor going at least testing that swing high because of that bottom signal that we have. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, let's expand this out as well. Nothing new here. We do don't we do know that it's TD9 count top held, but again, you just see that consolidation that's unfolding, whether it's in the smaller time frames or the larger time frames. On a 60-minute chart, we don't have anything here other than price trading into the sell zone. The sell zone is about where it's at right now, 13,529 up to 13,554. The two-hour chart has a wave seven top out there, and price is consolidating with inside its profile. That would say if you want to sell, the target might be that 13. 554 area to put on some kind of a, uh, a short position. The 240 minute chart has a TD9 count top. Now, if that high gets taken out, that means a close above it on a four hour time frame. The next four hour time frame bar closes at 2 p.m. You need to see a close above 13,554.50. If we get that, that's a signal that uh, you've got further rally to go out here. On the five hour time frame chart, it has a sell the D point pattern. Closing above that TD9 count top on the 240 would accomplish the same thing. And then finally, we're left with the daily time frame. And then the daily time frame, we're likely going to go ahead and negate its roads mint indicator top. That form, we had that little bear sash candle back here on May 12th. So that sets up the resistance as the high of that candle. The high of that candle is 13,494.25. Now, even if that gets taken out, we're trading above that right now, you can see that, yes, it was bar number eight. Yesterday was also bar number seven of a potential wave seven. Uh, top out there. But of course, if you get one tick above yesterday's high, that continues to extend. Uh, this is going to become bar number nine as long as price closes above the close of bar number five. That close was 13,446.50. So even though you could lose one topping signal, you would have another that would replace it. Now, the TD9 count top would not really complete until tomorrow. It'll be confirmed, could be confirmed today, but will not complete until tomorrow out there. So what does this say to us? It says we really have the top in place. There's no reason for the NQ that the NQ needs to take out that TD9 count top. It's basically like, um, well, so here's the issues. So let's take a look at the, the, the issues out here really would be the semiconductor index. So let's go try to take a look at that. I wish I had TAS market data for that. I don't. I'd have to manually do that. That would, be, uh, that would take a while to do. Um, so we're not doing that. I think it'll take a while. But let's take a look at the SMHs. So here you can see inside the SMHs, uh, yesterday they completed the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. I think we looked at that during the show. But what we didn't know was at day's end that we were going to see a bearish shooting star candle. Now, that should have confirmed a Gartley sell pattern. I don't know where today's close will be. But if today's close is, in fact, below yesterday's high, and yesterday's high is 127.42, then that pattern still remains in effect. Whereas if it closes above 127.42, 42 or whatever the number was that negates that signal and says we move higher it's only daily pattern out there is still the a to b equals cd to the upside and that would say it would need another bearish reversal candidate to confirm a top if you would ask me where is the smh headed to assuming it closes above yesterday's high the answer would be 130.25 that's the top of its weekly profile boy these markets are confusing negative market breadth across the board inside the s p and the ndx 100 and the semi saying, I don't know what kind of top you guys are talking about. I want to head higher. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the uh, Dow up 200, S&P's up 25, Russell's up 70. I'm sorry, Russell's up 18, NASDAQ is up 73. We're taking a look at the charts here for high-grade copper. Uh, we're looking at the July contract. This is a question from inside the Tiger's Den from, from uh, our man John, or otherwise goes by Z. And the question is specifically, what level must be exceeded to confirm a new rally? So, John, I have to answer the question um, this way. First... Um, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, and I realize we're just midway through the month out here, but price was trading above it, closed above it for four consecutive months. And now we have price, and that was a bearish structured monthly profile. And so price is pulled back into the level. The exact level would be 3.6559. The actual low has been 3.6525. If this is just a counter trend move to the downside, that's where it would find support. So that's a suggestion to me that the rally has already begun. Now, the weekly chart says, well, I'm not so sure, but the week is not over. Last week, it did close below the bottom of its weekly profile. So the first number to, of the piece of your puzzle is going to be, can price get back above the top of the bottom of that profile? And that level is 3.7872. If we get that, that combined with um, the monthly chart out there, that would then say to me, okay, we already have a bottom. Now, on the daily time frame, yesterday, the daily time frame, well, really, it was a couple days ago, it closed below its breakout level, 3.7445. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside. We can see that. If you can't see that, folks, let me just go ahead. I'll draw it in here. We'll just simply use a line chart. We'll go from A to B. So let me draw this in here. So it's our TD9 count top out here all the way down to wave number seven. I'm just simply going to go ahead and move that chart over here or that uh, line over there. And I'll pull the chart so we can see that we're already. So what it's doing today, uh, and that is the daily time frame chart for high grade copper, is it may. I don't know what it will look like at day's end, but this is confirming a Gartley buy pattern. Why? Because at the completion of the one-to-one -one level, we're talking about almost like an exact completion of the one-to-one, -one, we now have a bullish engulfing candle. What I don't know is what whether this will be a bullish candle at day's end. But, John, as we speak right now at 1120, if this were the, the, you know, the end of the uh, contract time period for the day, I would say you already have the confirmation of the bottom. That didn't answer the question that you had, which level must be exceeded to confirm a new rally out here. So... 
the la so in the case of the daily time frame chart, this is where you really this is a this is a piece of the puzzle out here. And prices below that red oscillator and change line. So that's the first level price got to get above 3.7732. You get above that, well now it's got to deal with daily profile levels. No idea how to get through. Remember the monthly was a bear structured profile. The daily is a bullish structured profile. What's that mean, Stevie? That means unless a new profile forms between now and then, then being when price would get up there, that's where a counter trend move would end to the upside. And that would be at uh, $3.87. I think that's too early to call uh, at this stage here. But so again, just to step you through the process with regard to high grade copper, the monthly chart has pulled back to exactly where a counter trend rally would find support. The weekly chart has closed below the bottom of its weekly profile, and that could be saying lower price, but it, it's a, if it can get back inside its profile, then it would be a false breakdown move. And to do that, it needs to get back above 3.7872 by the close of Friday. The daily at this stage here is confirming a Gartley buy pattern. If I take a look at the other intraday charts out here, um, I would say the 60-minute time frame chart is showing us a resistance level, and that's its TD9 count breakdown level at 3.7755. So if you get a close above that, that would be another positive out there. So perfect, John. You got it. You got the information. That was the best way that I could give you the answer to your question. And what that's going to then do now is that's going to lead us into another question. So one of the questions that we've got out here came in from Hector. And Hector wants to take a look at Southern Copper. Now, I have not taken a look at his question, but since we just took a look at the copper charts, let's go see what Southern Copper is doing. And let's actually go ahead and yeah, let me go ahead and read his question. I can come back to that right there in a minute. Uh, I think I put it right here. So let me pull up uh, his actual email question so I can at least try to answer that. And it goes like this. as uh, Southern Copper, where would you draw an A to B equals CD down and possibly buy the D point setup? Thanks and have a great day. Okay. So first with regard to Southern Copper, um, I can see that it has already completed a buy the D point pattern. So his first question, or the, the only question, is where would I draw the A, A to B equals CD pattern? So let's draw on the A point. That's going to be here. I'll give you the date. Give me a moment. We'll get back up there. The A point that I've got out here was from April 19th. That led to a uh, swing point low, B point, at April 27th. That then, I'm going to go ahead and just simply copy that line. So let's do a little cut, paste, and assemble. Everybody here can become a CPA. And now when we take a look at this, you can see that this has more than done the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Once we get to that area, we look for bullish reversal candles. Turns out, even though we had this gap to the downside on May 11, and then we had a little small-bodied candle right at the bottom of uh, the body of the prior candle out there, and then we have this move to the upside, that gave us our Three River evening or morning star pattern. What that does is that sets up your support level at 68.82. So it has completed the D point with that bullish reversal candle. Now, we have price that is trading with inside its profile out here. That profile runs from a, a bottom of 69.92, a center of 69.92, and that level was tested this morning. That is your buy area, 69.92. Now, I don't know whether price will get back there or not. It's still below the uh, top of its profile, which is at 71.02. If you close above 71.02, price should then target 73.72. At the same time that Southern Copper is uh, generating a buy the D point, a Gartley buy pattern. On a weekly basis, price is testing support, the bottom of the weekly profile. On a monthly basis, price is pulled back to test that green oscillator and change line. A green oscillator and change line is exactly where you would expect a retracement, even though this is a large retracement, a retracement to find support. So your question was, your question was not, um, is it a buy today? But the answer to that question is absolutely. It's got all, and, and then we just put that together with uh, copper and the uh, charts that we saw there. So you've got everything set up here, both inside of copper as well as inside of southern copper. So let's just say a, a great thanks to both uh, Mr. Z and the Tiger's Den and Hector, who was thinking the same kind of uh, thing out there for helping uh, you to, uh, each of you to identify two potential trades out there. And it's only 11.25 in the morning. Boy, is that a beautiful thing or what? Okay, so let's move on to our next request out here. The next request coming from Roger. He wanted to take a look at a more detailed review of that Dow equity future contract. So let's get back here. Uh, that wasn't it. Let's see if we get back to the uh, day tradings. There we go. 
So here we've got the uh, Dow Equity Future contract. So we can get down to a um, – the question is, um, as I look at this, you know, what do I see? What do, what do you see? What is out here to assist us with regard to the way that the Dow is trading? So on a daily time frame, just simply open up the uh, charts here. Um, you know, you've really got – I keep expanding this consolidation pattern out here. Um, your support level. So just simply using candlestick, this is not pattern recognition or anything along those. You've got a bullish engulfing candle here that says the low of the candles that it engulfed becomes support. So in the case of the Dow, your key level of support right now, because we don't have any profile level, is going to be 33004. Note that on your pad of paper. When we come back, we'll finish looking at the Dow and the future. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're still looking at the Dow Equity Future contract. This is for Roger inside the Tiger's Den. So, Raj, we've got support. We've identified a level of support on the daily, daily time frame. Let's just keep going across the uh, top there. The five-hour time frame, as it confirmed, Rhodes went to indicator bottom, suggests to move to 33,361. 
The four-hour chart has a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. It has resisted at 33,284. 33,284 is going to be your key resistance level. If price can close above that, we should see a further rally. The two-hour time frame chart has a road momentum indicator bottom. It's trading into its bearish structured profile with the resistance level being at the 33,283 mark. So that's why 33,284 is going to be your key area to watch and observe today. The 60-minute time frame chart, which had a TD9 count bottom, went ahead and formed a Gartley buy pattern. That Gartley buy pattern took price back to profile support and also during change line support. The move lower is done. If it can close above 33,233, it suggests it wants to move higher. The 30-minute chart also confirmed a sell the D-point pattern. Price found support at the bottom of its bullish structured profile. So its work to the downside is done. Should continue to move higher. Higher to where? Well, we still got to deal with that 33,284. But if 33,284 Four can get taken out, then it heads up to the 33,372 mark out there. If I look at the 15 minute time frame chart, even though it's got a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal, it's been triggered, no bearish candles or anything. So it's just a you know, a potential for a little shower out there. I don't see anything on the 10 minute chart. So overall, what the Dow equity future contracts are signaling to us right now, Roger, is that price wants to move higher. We don't know whether it can take out 33,284, but if it does, it wants to even move higher. And the odd thing is, and I'm not saying take a long trade. In fact, if anything, I would say this is a good moment to sit on the sidelines and watch what unfolds here because I just checked that market breadth again. And for the S&P and for the NASDAQ 100, it is bearish for all four time frames out there. It's not that the market can't rally and that those can't shift. It's just really unusual out there. So it's kind of like like expecting something to come out of uh, thin air out here to go ahead and send the markets lower. But I have yet to read the charts the way that I read the charts. And so we just did that. And I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for on the Dow equity future contract. Let's get to the next question coming in from Jim Belaya, who wants to take a look at the XLU. So let's see if we get that. That wasn't it. Let's see if we can find that XLU, the utility sector out there. Now, I don't know what the question was. I apologize. I didn't write it down. I don't know if there was a specific question other than to take a look at it. But here's what we do know about the XLU. It's going to go target 65.59. Why do you say that, Stevie? Well, for a couple of reasons. The first reason, though, is it's been below the bottom of its daily profile. This is now session number three. And that becomes the area where it broke out from. So that is the next level of support. On a weekly time frame, price is trading below the center of its profile at 66.76. So that says, okay, it wants to continue to move lower. 65.59 is the next price target level. On a weekly basis, the price target level will be 64.06. That would be the bottom of its weekly profile. And on a monthly time frame, you have price above the top of its profile, but below its oscillator and change line. So based upon the signals we see on the daily and the weekly, this says that it wants to pull back further. And this level of support would be 65.57. The top of its profile. So what we've got with regard to target areas for the utility sector is going to be 6557, 6406, and 6559 out there. Now, on a 30-minute time frame, if we go take a look at it, just see what's going on intraday, we don't have any kind of a bottom signal. Not just, yet. Well, I take that back. Do I take it back? Do I want to take it back? No, nah, I don't want to take it back. Uh, we do have a potential for a TD9 count pattern to form. But price must spike below 66.16 between now at 11.34, 8, 12.30. By 1 o'clock, we have to have a spike below that. And then you could potentially get a TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute time frame. That would say expect a little bit of a rally out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at the XLU. I guess lastly, how many days to the downside? Three consecutive days to the downside is what today's uh, low may uh, form. And if we take a look back here, even even during the very bearish of times, it mostly when it got to a three day consecutive move lower, it you, you at least got a one day move higher, if not two, three days higher out there. So I do believe over the long haul, uh, that's where the XLU is headed. But I would say to expect or anticipate, you know, a likely bounce tomorrow or the uh, next day out there. So I hope that helped you out. Jambalaya, thanks so much for the request. We had ELO inside the Tiger's Den. Wanted to take a look at KRE, the banking sector out there. So we take a look at KRE out here. What KRE has done, other than get trashed, it confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, and it did that on May the 5th. And it did that by generating a gap to the upside. 
and that became its bullish reversal candle. Now, today you've got a bear, a bull separating candle, another bullish candle, to confirm that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So what I would say, ELO, is odds favor what the KRE is going to do is go target resistance. And resistance, the first level of resistance is 4047. The second level of resistance is 4132. Now, short of a new profile forming, what you can see here, ELO, is that is a bullish structured profile. The price has been below for several days out here. A counter trend move, if this is all this is inside of the retail banking sector, it would find resistance at 4132. Not that it couldn't find it at 4047, which it can, but 4132 would be the end. If you see a close on a daily basis of 4132, it says this is more than a counter trend move. Could it be more than a counter trend move? Absolutely, positively, yes. Why, Stevie? Well, if you look at the weekly chart, you have a TD nine count bottom. That's been confirmed. That says what price wants to do is move up to 41.92. And 41.92 is its oscillator and change line. So KRE should continue to move higher. And look at that monthly chart. What does it do? It gets all the way back to where price broke out from. 35.17. Folks, learn the TD nine count system out there. It's an easy one. And, and, you know, depending on the time frame, I'm, you know, intraday, it's not going to be so easy to calculate yourself. But on a daily chart for whatever positions you have in your portfolio, you should just understand where they're at. And you should do it for multiple time frames out there. Real easy pattern. I teach it to you. Subscribe to Mastering Probability. If you do for 29 days, it doesn't cost you anything out there. So KRE uh, definitely is a, a bottom candidate. Um, out here. So I do hope that that helps you out, uh, ELO. And uh, thanks much for the request. The next question coming in from uh, Tim, who wants to take a look at on semiconductor. So let's actually get to the question that came in by email. So let me see if we can answer it. It says, uh, looking for a long position when the opportunity arises, looking at the daily, weekly, and monthly out here. So you have, oh, this is, this is not on, this is SCCO. Let me see if I've got on done here. There we go. We got on. Yeah, you know, the problem with 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 this is the only way for me to give you an entry price is to tell you to plug your nose, jump into the deep end of the pool. And, and I'm not I'm not really a big fan of that. What price is doing, it has a swing point out here from February 20, February 9th. That swing point did volume of nine point one million shares. So far today, you're moving into with four point two. You're moving into that swing point with volume. That high should get tested. The high of that swing point was 87.55, you're at 85.89. Now, I don't have any kind of a topping pattern in play out here. I'd hesitate to throw in an A to B equals C. Let me just, on my other charts here, let me just look real quickly. Just, well, I tell you what, we're going to a break right now. Let me just uh, review ON on Semiconductor as we're in that break, see if we can come up with an A to B equals C to you or not. And, um, but it is headed higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So if we take a look at on semiconductor out there, and Tim is looking for an entry into it, and uh, you know, it's a tough thing to do. It's up at its really near its all-time highs. It's going to go attack those all-time highs. It may take them out. In fact, it has a confirmed monthly A to B equals CD to the upside. That was confirmed uh, when the B point was passed with volume. That was back in February of 2023. 168 million shares took out volume of 154 million shares. So the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside in on semiconductor 107.84. I would say, and this is the monthly chart we're looking at, that this will do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, at least at this stage of the game. So more likely its price target is 125. That would be the one to 1.272 A to B equals CD to the upside. You're above the top of its weekly, its monthly, its daily profile out there. The only thing you could do out here, Tim, is you've got to look for some type of intraday pattern. And here we take a look at the 30 minute time frame charts. You can see back here, you had a nice TD nine count bottom pattern. That was at about one o'clock in the afternoon on May the 9th. That was really the last real good entry uh, area into it. Uh, you could have perhaps taken something at 10 o'clock this morning, as, but you would have needed to have known where the breakout level was, 81.71 TD9 count, as well as profile levels, which was a slightly bullish structured profile. So short of that, I just think you've got to go down to a short-term time frame chart uh, and see if you can find a pattern on a retracement, and then you can go ahead and uh, jump on in. Now, from a day's consecutive standpoint to the upside with regard to on, this is going to become day number six out here. And is it getting along in the tooth? It probably is. So odds favor that uh, you get some type of pullback, I'd say, over the next, uh, you know, 48 to 72 uh, trading hours uh, out there, or trading, uh, day, uh, the days, I should say. Um, so that's what I would look at when you take a look at uh, on semiconductor. So thanks so much for the request out there. Let's go to our next request. I believe the next request that I've got, I don't think I have anything else inside the Tiger's Den. But if I do, hold on, let me see here. Let me just make sure. Don't want to. I don't think that I do, but if there was something and I didn't get to it, uh, please let me know. We do have a couple that have come in by uh, by email, so let's get to those. The first one by Joe. And Joe wants to take a look at Tilray. T-L-R-Y is a ticker symbol out here. So let's get that up. He says, can you please look at Tilray for a buy to go along? Also, if you have time, can you please look at natural gas for a long position? Absolutely. We'll take a look at uh, both those. So we take a look at Tilray out here. What do we see? What do we see? Let's pull this back on the daily time frame. So what Tilray did was it formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom. And it does that back here on April 27th when price gaps up. And then where does it run into resistance? The resistance that it ran into out here was the top of its uh, weekly profile. And that number is up at 274. So you really need to see two consecutive close above 274 to suggest that this might be looking at a change in trend signal out here. 
So for an entry position inside of Tilray, right now price today is pulling back and it hasn't even tested it yet. Let's see what's going on on a 30 minute chart out here. So on a 30 minute time frame chart for Tilray, you have a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom that formed at 10.30 this morning. Price is above its profile, closed above it at that 11.30 time frame. What Tilray should do, at least right now, is get up to 245. If it can close above 245, it becomes a candidate for a bottom out here, not because of a daily time frame uh, pattern. We already have that, but you know, price is pulled back and it's 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 pulling back into an area that could be support. Now, the real preference would be to retest that swing point from April 26 that had volume of 10.4 million shares. That was tested here with 7.1 million shares back on the trading day of May 2nd. You know, Volume-wise, today inside of Tilray is only about 3 million shares. So, you, uh, you know, if you're looking, to, here, here's where I would say it. To take your buy would be at uh, 226. 226. That would at least be a test of that swing point. If you get a test of that swing point on light volume, that would be good. You can see the bottom of the weekly profile is 223. So that's really where the combination of all of that uh, comes from. So that's what I see. We take a look at um, Tilray out there. So I hope that that helps you out, Joe. You wanted to also take a look at natural gas. So to take a look at natural gas right now, now we're going to roll over into the July contract here shortly. But let me just pull up the natural gas June charts. Give me a moment here, if you would. You don't have a choice. Uh, oh, I've always oh, the euro. Mike wanted me to look at the euro. We're going to do that next. Thank you. We just I just didn't put it in here. Euro for Mike. Okay, so now as we pull up the uh, gold contract, geez, Stevie, that wasn't what I was looking at. We wanted to pull up the uh, natural gas contract. Sorry about that. Well, now you get to take a look at the gold contract, but. That's not what was asked for. So let me get to natural gas. There we go. NG. Now these charts will populate. You're asking if natural gas is a uh, buy. Are you looking at the future contract? Are you looking at UNG? Uh, you know, what What are you looking at? And the answer is going to be, yeah, it's a buy. It's got a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Price is just simply uh, consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. Um, will it get more of a pullback out here? You know, because it did find resistance at the top of its profile yesterday and the top of its profile today, perhaps. So it is it is a buy. And, and we had a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on the daily. We have a confirmed TD9 count on the weekly. It looks like we might get a close above that oscillator and change line, which is about 226. If we get that on Friday, we have a change in trend signal with battles up top when it comes to natural gas. Now, conservatively, the buy would be at about $2.20 out there. That is the oscillator and change line on the daily time frame. But will we get down there? And what I don't have is any kind of signals on any kind of intraday time frame to suggest that that is the likely outcome there, Joe. But if you're asking has natural gas bottom, the answer is it has, both on the daily and the weekly. And that's what uh, that's all that we need out there. So let's go to the next question coming in from Hector. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to go take a look at the euro. We will get to Hector's question. But let me close out this chart here. Let me just close out the gold ones, too, just to freeze up some space. Give me a moment. We'll, we'll do that. Then we'll get right over to the euro for Mike. Uh, Mike in uh, Florence, previously of Sarasota, and a few other places. So we've got our traveling, our traveling Mike, which is a wonderful thing. So now let's take a look at the euro charts. So on the in the case of the euro, the euro on a monthly basis says that that move, which looked like it had regained its trend line, was a false was a uh, false indication. We're back below that trend line. So I saw you said something about trend. I don't know if it was for that long-term time frame or not. On a weekly basis, price has a seventh wave move top. That is letter G. You can see that out there. That's a very small portion of the Chapman wave. And now price is below its oscillator and change line. So the further, further retracement is likely. So that's the weekly chart. Daily time frame chart shows that price is broken through its consolidation. Price is testing profile support out here. Uh, although I don't really use, we're not going to use profiles on, uh, on uh, so we can't can't say that. You are in bar number seven out here, so you could get a daily TD nine count bottom between tomorrow, Thursday, and Tuesday of next week. So Mike, we need to be on the lookout for that as a potential pattern out there. So I don't see any other kind of bottom signal. Don't really see an A to B equal C D to the downside. I do see a sixty minute TD nine count bottom, but that's about it. 
And price right now bouncing right up into where a counter trend move on a 60 minute basis would stall. So that says if you can't get a close above 1.086, you're likely to head up to 1.0867, CD9 count breakdown level. So I hope that helped you out, Mike. If there's additional information that you need, please let me know. Hey, where's the euro going longer term? We'll take a look at the A to B equals CD to the downside for the yearly time That's a beauty. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Right. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, to folks. Apparently, I pulled one of those uh, Stevie um, Stevie tricks out there, talking about one thing showing something else. So, my apology uh, for that out there. Uh, let's. Uh, we've got two two requests out here to at least take a look at. Maybe three if I can get to platinum. Exxon Mobil. Hector wants to take a look at Exxon Mobil. What do we have here? You've got an A to B equals C D to the downside. So the B point, which is from the trading day of May fourth, at volume of 17 million shares. That was passed with 17 million shares. So you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside out here. Um, you do have support at 102.34. That's on the weekly time frame. So the weekly's got to confirm Roach momentum indicator bottom. The daily A to B equals CD to the downside will come to fruition if we get a close below 102.34. Now, reality is it would really need to close below the support level on the weekly time frame, which would be 98.02, and that's based upon that, that candlestick um, um, a support level out there. So there is an A to B equals CD to the downside. You are trading below the monthly 
um, a center of its bearish structured profile. So it says 84.58 could even be game out here. But right now, I would be watching 102.34 for additional clues out there. So I hope that helps you out, Hector. Bob in uh, Spokane wanted to take a look at ENBX out here. So let's pull that up, see if we can figure out what this is. ENBX is trading at about $12.60. 1262 to be specifically. This is NOVIX Corp. So what do we have out here? Right now, I'd have to say you've got a weekly TD9 count top that took price back to support the bullish structured profile area. So the move to the downside, the top is done. The move to the downside basically should be over out here. And now you've just got a good old fashioned consolidation with inside that profile level. So the consolidation, we'd say, runs from about 870 up to 1473 out there. There's really not much else for me to uh, report on to you with regard to ENBX out there. Well, I guess the last thing I could share, share with you is look at the 30-minute time frame. Well, the daily's got 1275 as a resistance point. The 30 minutes got 1283, TD9 count breakdown resistance area out there. So I do hope that that helped you out. That was for Bob in uh, Spokane. And that is the end of the show out here. So folks, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll look forward to speaking with you again on a terrific Thursday. Take care. Be safe out there.